Hey, I appreciate you coming by for my daily devotions for uh, Monday, October 30th, 2023. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 7, Matthew chapter 14, Psalm 119, 161 through 168, and Exodus chapter 37. <clears throat> um, yesterday, we looked at the 13th chapter of Matthew, which is uh, all kinds of parables about the kingdom. It's a great chapter. I ought to do a whole series on that chapter someday. And uh, there's all kinds of things I ought to do. Wish I had more time to get to them. Um, but there's the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl in verses 44 and four through 46. Great stuff. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought the field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The point, the kingdom of God is the rule of Jesus. And what you do is you sell out to it. You prioritize it. You give everything away and sell out to the rule of Jesus as Lord. That's the kingdom. You can get in, you're in the kingdom now when you sell out to Jesus as Lord and uh, make him the ruler of your life. You elevate him above everything and everyone, and make him Lord of all. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, I pray for I pray for the peace of Israel. I bring peace to the to that land again. Most of all, I pray that the Prince of Peace would rule all over the earth. That people would come to Jesus and make him the Lord of their lives. So move that way, Father. And then speak to us today. Address our lives by the truth we find in your Word. Speak to us. Uh, write it on our hearts and make us different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation chapter 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on the, any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. He wants, wants people sealed so they won't be damaged by the things coming on earth. Verse 4, then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes who had become Christians, who were Christ followers. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders of the four living creatures, they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God to serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will, be, will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And then Matthew chapter 14. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the reports about Jesus. And he said to his attendants, this is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. 
That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John because he was afraid of the people, but they considered him a prophet. Uh, on Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for them and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted. And he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it, and they went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the, to from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed the sick, their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately, I, he did that with what I call five biscuits and two sardines. That's wow, a great miracle. Could have been up to 20,000 people because they didn't count women and children. So it's 5,000 men. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from, from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. And Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell them to come to you on the water. Come, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when he, they had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. When they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let, them, to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. Psalm 119, 161 through 168. Winding up the 119 Psalms. Great Psalm. People don't pay enough attention to it, folks. They just don't. Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, O Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for my ways are known to you. Then uh, Exodus chapter 37 Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold, both inside and out, and made a gold molding around it. He cast four rings, rings for it and fastened them to its four feet with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. 
and he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. He made the atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he made two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. He made one cherub on one side, one end, and the second cherub on the other. At the two ends, he made them of one piece with, with, a, with the covering. The cherubim had wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim faced each other, looking toward the cover. They made the table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Then they overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They also made uh, made around it a rim of hand a hand breadth wide and a, and a gold molding on the rim. They cast four gold rings for the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. The rings were put close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. The poles for carrying the table were made of acacia wood and were overlaid with gold. And they made from pure gold the articles of the table, its plates and dishes and bowls and its pitchers for the pouring out of drink offerings. They made the lampstand of pure gold and hammered it out, base and shaft, its flower-like cups, buds, and blossoms were one piece with it. Six branches extended from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side, three on the other. Three cubits of sh shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms were on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extended from the lampstand. And on the lampstand were four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms. One bud was under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud under the third pair, six branches in all. The buds and the branches were all of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. They made its seven lamps as well as its wick trimmers and trays of pure gold. They made the lampstand and all its accessories from one talent of pure gold. They made the altar of incense out of acacia wood. It was square a cubit long and a cubit wide and two cubits high, its horns of one piece with it. They overlaid the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They made two gold rings below the molding, two on opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. They also made the sacred anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense, the work of a perfumer. Ah, the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us today. Change our lives by the truth we find there. Write it on our hearts. Change us from the inside out by the power of the Holy Spirit, according to the truth we find in your word. Bless this day, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.